It's no secret that the stock grind sucks. I'm asked all the time how to stock grind X plane, but in reality there's no real shortcut to doing so. However, there are a few tips that I think may help the efficiency of your stock grind and make it a little bit less painful overall. If you enjoyed this video or find it helpful, please do share with a friend or hit the like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's begin. Firstly, I would like to point out that to you new top tier players, you guys have it easy. Us boomers had to stock grind our top tier jets without any stock missiles and no flares. And we had to do so while walking uphill both ways. Point is, Gaijin has made the stock grind ever so slightly less painful by giving us the bare essentials for playing top tier, which is flares and missiles. Usually the missiles aren't very competitive for the BR and access to only flares and no chaff isn't always ideal, but it is better than nothing. This brings us to our first tip, which is stay low. As a stock plane, you don't have any chaff, so your ability to climb to altitude without catching a radar missile is pretty much zero. Sure, you could kinetically evade a SAR, or if you're lucky, even notch it, but this isn't always reliable, depending on ranges, speeds, and quantity of missiles, so it's best to just stay low and that way you can multipath the SAR missiles. What do I mean by multipath? Multipath is the term for missiles' inability to track a target directly over land. If you're about 40 meters from the ground when there is an incoming SAR missile, it should not hit you. The missile's ability to hit you goes by above ground level altitude, so your altimeter usually isn't going to be very helpful for determining if you're in a safe zone or not, so you're really just going to have to eyeball it and that comes with experience. When in doubt, if you are within a safe altitude, just fly directly over treetops and you'll be fine. Do keep in mind that it is possible for the missile to damage you when it splashes the ground or in very rare cases it might directly hit you. You can counter this by changing your flight path as the missile is approaching, so maybe move your nose a little bit to the left or to the right, do anything that actually makes you turn and make the missile have to change its flight path. Next up being another combat tip, do not go right after taking off from the runway. Top tier is always a take off and go left javascript. Your entire team and the entire enemy team as well are going to be going left. This means that if you go right, you will very often be completely alone versus the entire enemy team. Missile Thunder is absolutely 100% reliant on teammates, so if you're in a 1 versus 3 or 4, 5, etc., and there's nothing else for the enemy team to focus on, you will be short-lived, so make sure you're staying left. Piggybacking off of that, do not be the first one into the combat zone, being that you have just two subpar IR missiles and no radar missiles as a stock airplane, your early game impact potential is very slim. There's no reason to be the first target the enemy team salivates over when you don't have much capability to actually fend them off. Methodically bait your teammates and make sure enemies get distracted and the furball has begun before you enter the combat area and hopefully that way you might be able to sneak your two crappy missiles in for kills. Speaking of missiles, let's talk modifications, what you are actually grinding in the first place. In my opinion, 16 vs 16 top tier air realistic battle lends itself much more strongly toward the weapons carrying ability rather than the flight performance of your jet. With how much thrust these engines produce while stock, you're really not missing out on much in terms of playstyle without having the performance upgrades. In fact, the footage you're seeing on the screen is me playing my jets without any of the performance mods equipped, and I'm also using a stock missile slash flare loadout with the exception of one clip where I forgot that the MiG-29 has stock R60s instead of stock R60Ms. Regardless, at no point was I ever in a fight where I was wishing I had a spaded plane for flight performance while I was getting any of this footage. I recommend going straight for researching your newer missiles, both radar and IR, before focusing on your performance mods. Of course, the way the modification research works, you will have to pick up some of the performance mods in the process of getting your missiles. So while you're at it, the most important performance mods are as follows, compressor, new boosters, G-suit, and lastly, engine, and usually you will end up researching them in that order. That's just the way it works, the way the tiers are, and really those four are pretty much all equally important anyway. Now let's talk playstyle. Just in War Thunder in general, it's a good idea to treat every single match a little bit differently, but especially so when you're stock. In down tiers, it is much more important to be way more aggressive than you usually are. Down tiers really aren't that frequent, and it is your best chance of getting RP, so try to make the most of it. Usually a stock top tier jet is still going to be superior to a spaded one of an entire BR lower, so you should be able to make riskier plays for higher reward. 
To the contrary, in full up tiers, it is wise to be more reserved. As we mentioned earlier, it's definitely not a good idea to be the first target that the enemy team acquires. Bait your teammates a little bit. Don't play so passive to where the match is pretty much over by the time you get there, but you definitely don't want to be the first one in and you want to try to pick off somebody as a third party. As far as bombing goes, bombing isn't always a terrible idea. I don't want to fully recommend this as a stock grinding tactic because it largely depends on the plane that you're actually using. Sometimes you're selling yourself short and your team short by positioning for a bomb run rather than getting ready to fight the enemy. Other times it doesn't change anything. I will leave this one up to you, but what I do always recommend if you decide to bomb is to not run a full bomb load. Less bombs means less weight, which will make your plane faster. And in the instances where you're competing with teammates for bases to bomb, you want to make sure that you actually get there first. Some bomb tonnage is better than no bomb tonnage because you are too late. Lastly, Gaishin does have a pretty decent free to play crutch that everybody should be taking advantage of regardless, the Warbond Shop. Make sure you're completing your daily and special tasks to level up your battle pass slash Warbond Shop progress. They are both great resources for acquiring RP and SL boosters for free, you don't have to pay money if you don't want to, and can even result in getting a free premium vehicle or premium time to help you grind with. I am going to sneak one more thing in here at the end because I did title this video something along the lines of free to play I'm sure, but I do think it's worth mentioning regardless. It is kind of a no brainer either way so hopefully you guys aren't too upset that I'm including it in the video, but either way stock grinding a jet sucks no matter how you slice it. So I really really recommend to buy some premium time to make the grind go quicker. Obviously, this isn't an option for everybody. I get that either due to finances or pure desire to not give the snail any money. I fully understand. Regardless though, for those who would consider doing so, premium time goes on sale three times a year. May, October, and December are the most common. Also, modifications also go on sale if you're purchasing them outright for Golden Eagles. That's an option for you. Their Silver Lions cost is also reduced during the same period for the same percentage if you wanted to research them for free and then just wait on pur purchasing them with the Silver Lions. Modifications are 30% off in May and 50% off in early November and in late December. That's all I got for stock grinding top tier jets. N like I said, no matter how you slice this guys, stock grinding a top tier jet is not fun. There is no secret hack that I can give you that's going to make it way easier and way faster. You're just going to have to get through it. But with some of these tips, I do believe that your, your efficiency is probably going to increase a little bit. It will make it a little bit more bearable for you. And well, I hope you're not stressing out and losing sleep over stock grinding something like the F4C, for example. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you later.